I welcome you to paint with me. Grab your paints. You can use acrylics, you can use oils, you can use crayons, you can use um, colored pencils or pastels. I don't think this is very suitable for watercolors, but you can try. And you can also use digital, uh, digital technology, but I really don't know much about it. So the whole idea is let's have fun. This is suitable for any kind of painting. And also if you want to paint with friends or if you want to paint alone or with your children, this is going to be a fun thing to do. So join me and let's get started. Thank you. Use a piece of paper, that's a horizontal paper, and just mark the middle from a vertical and horizontal so that you can place the different shapes easier on the paper for the composition. Choose a dark orange and just swipe it. You can see that it's only on the top half of the page and it's a rather, you know, small rectangular shape. The next color is a dark blue color, and you're going to fill out a lot of the surface with that dark blue color. The next one is sort of a violet color that's um, being muted. It's not very bright, and you put it right on the left. The next color is also a sort of a muted blue. It's the same kind of uh, value, we call it, as the purple. So choose that color and you paint three rectangles. These rectangles are not the same shape, they're not the same size, but look at where they are placed on the left top quadrant above the orange bar. The next is using a very light peach color. You fill up the top, part of the bottom, and what's left is going to be a dusty light blue color. This way you have your surface filled out. Now, if you use digital art, you might want to do exactly as it's shown in here. I used oils and I'll show you exactly more or less what it should be looking like. You should not be trying to attempt to have sharp edges. This is just where you place these colors. But by now you have the surface filled in rough edges. If you have them sharp, don't worry, we will roughen them up. But this is basically what you have for now. You can finish it here and do a sort of a Pierre Mondrian style of landscape, or you can continue painting with me in a more figurative way. From here, this is what I had, and this is the next step that we're gonna do for the painting. So you have the shapes established and the next step is going to be making a little bit more of the definition for those shapes. So now you get on a bright sort of an orangey or dark yellow color and that's the one that you're going to use to establish the diagonal that shapes the pier and the pylons, the top of the pylons. So just Put it in there, whichever medium that you are using. The next color is the same color, but a little lighter or with white. And you just brush it or just lightly touch it on the bottom of that pier so that we can start establishing where the light is hitting in that vegetation. That same color, you start using it for the top of the buildings where the light is hitting them. That's what you're going to be seeing, just very lightly. Now, this sort of a dark green uh, color is used on top of that orange, just lightly establish a less orangey color in there, and that st starts helping us with the shaping. This blue color is an important color that you should notice. It's the darkest color of the sky. It is not really very dark and it's only used in one place of the sky. Just that dot. Don't use it anywhere else. But it's also used on the water. 
the lightest blue color that's the next color that you're going to be using goes in other areas of the sky and also you're going to be seeing that on the water and that helps also establishing the reflection on the water that gives you the idea that there's a railing on those uh, pylons on the pier that light blue you can use in other areas of the water it is not very light but you can still use it on all of those areas on the water and finally you have like a dusty pink color you might be wondering where is that color going well that's believe it or not what seems to be white on the sky that is the color that you're going to be using for the rest of the areas on the sky and also on some of the reflections on the water are you with me so far take your time and just look at the image and start building your own painting make this painting your own ready for the next step right this is where we're going so there's a little bit more work here in shaping the buildings the first thing we're going to be using as you can see there is a creamy color this time i actually put my background white so that you really see that this creamy color is what appears to be white on the sky it's not white but it does look very sort of whitish so just follow the instructions and hopefully you'll get something that you will like at the end use this creamy color to bring out those lights it is important that that's establishing the clouds and the clouds seem to have a lot of bright sunlight on them but, but it also helps establishing the shapes of the buildings around them in the previous versions and the version that you have this building um the the right hand building was wider and what i did was to actually carve out the shape make it smaller by using that light color of the sky you could if you want to do the paint along with me after you see it the first time you could just make that rectangle less wide from the beginning but it is important you carve it out you put the shapes of the light sky around the buildings and you start establishing how the buildings are looking like the next color is like a chocolate kind color maybe i'm hungry um, and you use it for the pylon on the longfellow bridge just in case that you don't recognize it we are painting the prudential building and the Longfellow Bridge in front of it. So we're looking at the Prudential from the north and the light is coming from the west, it's a sunset. The next color is a dark violet color. It is not black, just in case it looks black in your screen, it is a dark violet. And that's what you're going to be using to establish a bit better all the, all the dark shapes. You already had a dark blue in there. So it shouldn't be hard to layer on top this dark violet color and establish also the reflections on the water. Very important is the reflections of the Longfellow Bridge. So you start making that round, sort of roundy shape of both the bridge and its reflection with this dark color. Next is sort of a dusty pinkish bluish color and that color is going on the water. If you see on the left of the painting it looks very white but that's that pinkish bluish color that you're going to be using to establish the reflections of the clouds on the water. This kind of yellowish that is not very bright yellow, you're going to be using for establishing the light on the Prudential building. And just make sure that the light is coming, the sunset is on the right. So I wanted to look at the Prudential building and sort of 
make it in a way that the building on the right is producing a shadow on it. So when you put the lights, I do from right to left, you know, there, there are strokes of the brush and if you do it with a pencil, don't do it vertical. It just gives a little bit better feeling of a painterly style when you go uh, broken lines. Same thing with the other building. I don't know the name of that building, but it's the building on the left of the Prudential, which also has a characteristic shape. And just make sure that for the three buildings, the light is coming from the right and you keep the darker area on the left of the building. The next color is a lighter yellow, slightly lighter than what we just used. And that lighter yellow is what you're going to be using for the lights or highlights on the vegetation just uh, at the bottom of the Longfellow Bridge. And finally, it's like a salmon -y color. It's an orange color that's a lighter color. And that's the one you're going to use to establish the pier and the top of the pylons. You can go as detailed as you want. I don't like to use too much detail and it still gives the impression that there is water, that there's a bridge and there's the building in the back. Even if you don't know the Boston skyline, you may know the Prudential building. So that's how you establish the different lines. Finally, this blue, it's not a very br bright blue, but it's the blue that you use on the very top of the painting. As you can see, it was a very cloudy day, day, and I didn't have in this particular view too much of the sky, but it is reflected in the water. So the same blue that you're using on the part of the sky that you can see better, use it for the water. Are you with me so, so far? You can pause it, you can take a look at the image and you can see how your painting is coming up. Ready for the next step? Okay. So in this next step, I'm gonna be working a bit more on the buildings. I did not like very much the way that they were looking. They were too blue and it was a summer sunset I wanted to give more of a sensation of the warmth that we had that day so what I did was to create this kind of it's a mauve color it's like a red with blue and very muted and that's what I used for the shadows on all of the buildings the buildings as you can see are not defined you can see that there's something in there and also for the prudential making sure that the typical shape of the potential is maintained. So I use that color for all of those shadows. And then this kind of uh, orangey dark yellow, uh, which is not canary yellow, not very light yellow, but it's more like, a, like an ochre yellow. It's the one that I was using for establishing the light areas of the buildings. Now notice that the Prudential building is having now a triangular shape. You can keep it triangular as I did or as I had it before where the shadow of the building on the right was more notable. But just make sure that the top of it is the one that has more light. And from here, I then started working a bit more on the rest of the painting to get to this place. Are you ready for the final stage? So yes, there's a bit more that you need to work to get to this stage. So first thing is I created a very light violet, established again the shadows. By making these shadows lighter than they were before, but note, they're still darker than the sky. But by making them lighter, there's a feeling of warmth. That, that day was a very hot day, by the way. So it, you can actually see there in the distance, it pushed them back. So just use it for all of the shadows on the left side of all of the buildings that you see in the back on the skyline. That also pushes the buildings 
even farther away from the Longfellow Bridge. Then I added sort of a maroon type of red color. So that goes on the back of the structure that it's on the pier closer to us and also on the Longfellow Bridge, on the areas that are shaded. I made them in a little warmer color than I had before. So we started with a dark blue and we're slowly building layers on top. And that's what's used to establish some of the shapes. Again, there's no detail and there's no architectural accuracy here, but it's just an impression of what you want to have at the very end of the bridge, the buildings in the back, and some reflections in the water. Now, this kind of blue, it's a light blue and it's the darkest blue on the sky. You also are going to be using it for the water and you wiggle down where the reflections are. There's not much detail there. But by mixing it with a more of a darker blue on the water, as you can see at the bottom, you don't blend it. Just put some dark by the side of the light and put some different kinds of blue, but don't mix them. And it does give the impression that it's reflecting the sky with the clouds on the sky. And also make sure that the reflections of the pier that actually had those uh, different uh, areas on, on the pylons, that you do those reflections in the water. Now this is like a bright green. You can use this bright green or you can go for a little bit less bright, but this is what I used for the vegetation. Again, it was a uh, very bright day and I use this bright green also on the pier. You want to keep it on the yellowish side, you can do that, but I wanted to put it more greenish. And that's what I use for all the highlights in the vegetation and also on the pier. Finally, I want you to see there's this light blue, which has a little hint of green, and that's what's used for the clouds. It is not white. That's what I use for the clouds. You can see now on this uh, final painting that the shadow of the building on the right of the Prudential is a rectangular shadow on the Prudential building, but I did want to make it sort of an orangey dark yellow color instead of purple. I left the violet purplish shadow for the left side of the buildings. And this is the way that I finished the painting. I hope you had fun. I hope you can do your own rendition of this painting and enjoy. And if you shared it with people and or your children, each one of you are going to make your own painting out of this painting, which is the Prudential Building in Boston. Thank you very much. And if this is the first time you see my channel, please uh, check my channel, subscribe if you like it. And if you are back in my channel and you already know the channel, I'm glad that you are enjoying it. And please let me know if there's anything else that you would like me to post in terms of training videos or educational videos. Have fun. Thank you very much for your time.